Um, good afternoon, grade 12s. My name is uh, Mrs. Van Graan, and I'm a mathematical literacy teacher at CBC St. John's in Parklands. Um, I hope that you all had a lovely break and that you are ready for term two. So today's lesson will be on finance and then particularly on income tax. Um, in term one, you have already covered the income tax and today is actually going to be like um, a revision lesson. And we are just going to make sure to double check that we all, that we're familiar with all the terminology and the theory regarding the income tax. Um, but before we can actually start with income tax, um, grade 12s, I would like to link um, a payslip um, because the whole income tax, uh, they go hand in hand, the payslip and then the way that we're going to move forward to work out um, the amount of tax that an individual needs to pay. So if we are going to move um, along, I just want to, on the screen, you will see that there's a payslip in front of you. And um, normally they will um, can, or they can, not normally, but they can give you a payslip together with the tax question. So let's just quickly have a look at this specific payslip. It is Bradley Woods payslip, and then um, the address, the contact number, and then the em employee is Bradley Wood. And sometimes grade 12s, they do not, uh, this uh, salary slip is then linked to the tax question and they will not tell you how old the person uh, or like Bradley Wood, how old he is. They give you the employer ID number and then from the ID number, you must be able to work out the age of the person. And then there's the person's tax reference number. So the meaning of that is that number is registered at SARS and they know Bradley Wood as that number. And then he also contributes towards um, tax per month. So when we go to the earnings side of the salary slip, we see that he earns a basic salary of 25,900, a travel allowance, he gets a housing allowance, then there's a missing value there. And then we go to the right hand side where he, we find his deductions. In other words, what do the employer deduct from uh, Bradley's salary. So he deducts a pay as you earn of 2,540.52, a UIF contribution, he deducts a pension fund, and he also belongs to a medical aid, five dependents. So I want to quickly talk about the pay as you earn. So the pay as you earn amount is the amount that we are going to work out in the tax tables. This is why I say that a salary slip and tax, they go hand in hand. So the pay as you earn is what we are going to work out in the tax tables. UIF, you contribute to UIF. Then of course there's your pension fund and the medical aid deduction from the um, salary slip year is the amount that will then be paid to the medical aid that he belongs to. Then there's nothing there by deductions and then C is net pay. So this question can ask, um, explain the term net pay on the pay slip. So if I go back, to net pay, C is net pay, explain the term net pay. So net pay is the salary after deductions. I will talk about it um, later on. Then number 2.2, .2, they ask calculate the value of A. Now the value of A is his gross income. Okay, so all of this here is his income. So you will add everything together to get to A. Then B is also a missing value. That's the pension fund. 
and they are very kind. They say 7.5% of the basic salary. So if we go to the calculation, it is 7.5 of the basic salary, which is 25,900, and that is in 1,942 rand and 50 cents. Then we go back to the salary slip, and then there's another calculation or another um, missing link, that is number C. So then we go. So for uh, us to work out number C, we need to add up and get all the deductions. So that is the pay as you earn, the UIF, and then the pension, which we worked out in B, you need to fill it in, and then the contribution to the medical aid. And we add up all of that, then we'll get total deductions. So we add up total deductions, it's 8,508 rand 33 cents, and then we deduct that to get the net pay. In other words, what does he take home? What will be paid into his bank account? That's 23,291 rand and 67 cents. So this is then important to understand the salary slip and how it's going to link up with the tax. So let's then start with income tax. So income tax, there's lots of theory. We need to understand lots of theory before we can actually start to work out the income tax. So income tax is the amount deducted from your earnings by the government. So taxes, taxes are income for the government of any country, our country, any other country. Tax money are used for all expenses of the government. And some of the expenses that they use our tax money for is infrastructure, maintenance, grants, that people receive and they pay out, and medical care for the poor. So remember, if I want, I want to go back to the pay slip here, this Mr. Bradley Wood, there's a deduction of medical aid on his pay slip. So the meaning of that is he belongs to a medical aid. But if you don't belong to a medical aid and you go to um, a government hospital, then the medical care, so the tax that we pay is part of what the government will use it for, medical care for the poor, people who don't belong to a medical aid. So the amount of income tax paid depends on the amount of money you earn. So in South Africa, we have a progressive tax system in which taxation progressively increases as the individual income grows. So in short, it boils down to the more you money you earn, the more tax you're going to pay. So individual income tax is also referred to as personal income tax. So then we also need to understand a tax year. So what is a tax year? A tax year starts on the 1st of March of a specific year, that is now for SARS, and ends on the 28th or the 29th of February of the following or the next year. I say 28, 29 because sometimes every four years we have a leap year and then there's 29 days in February. So the tax year will start on the 1st of March, as an example, 2019, and to the 28, 29th of February 2020. We call, we call this the 2019-2020 tax year of assessment. So remember, a tax year equals 12 months. So then we have lots of terminology related to income tax. So let's talk about tax brackets. So a tax bracket refer to a range of income subject to a certain income rate. Then pay as you earn. Remember, I'm, um, on the pay slip, there was a pay as you earn. So 
This will appear on your salary slip. Employers are forced to deduct tax from their employees every time they get a salary. So if you get paid a salary, then for uh, 12 times a year, they will deduct the, your pay as you earn, which must be paid over to SARS. Then we come to gross salary. So the total amount earned in a month, so this is all types of salary. Um, in other words, all the money you earn, salary, overtime, your bonus, any of those things, they are your gross salary. So everything before deductions. Then we come to deductions. So if you can remember the salary slip on the right hand side, these are amounts that need to be subtracted from your gross salary before money is deposited into the employee's bank account. So examples can be UIF, pension, remember 7.5%, medical aid, trade unions, your loan repayments, tax, it depends on each individual. But the, this, the, these are all examples. Then we come to net salary. So net salary also known as, remember, we talked about this on the salary slip, also known as take home pay. So this is the amount that is deposited into an employee's bank account after deductions were done. So if you want to uh, um, look at the formula, we say net salary is your gross salary minus, so everything you earn, all your income minus your deductions. So what is income tax? Income tax, it, this is tax on all your sources of income. Remember, all the sources, not just your salary, you can, salary is one form of income. You can get income on interest earned, so you have money put away and you get interest on that. And you also maybe get a rental income. You have a house that you rent out, that's called rental income. And that is also a form or a source of income. Um, it is calculated on the taxable income. All right, this is income tax, all your sources of income. Then we come to the taxable income, the income on which the tax will be calculated. This is a very important word to understand taxable income. So taxable income is your gross income before deductions minus tax deductible deductions. Or you can see it as taxable income is gross income everything you earn before deductions minus your pension fund contribution. This is different from net salary, although the calculations, they look similar. So gross income, this is different from gross salary because it includes all your forms of income. Gross salary is just the salary that you earn. Gross income is all the different sources of income. The rental that if you, if you maybe you are quite good and you uh, write a textbook, so you get royalties. Textbook royalties is money that you earn from when your, they sell your textbooks. So that is money that you get. That is textbook royalties. That is the income for you. Rental income, salary. So there's a difference between gross income and gross salary. So what is a tax rebate? So a tax rebate is an amount deducted from or taken off the tax after tax payable has been worked out. So a rebate amount will always be given to you. It's part of what they every year the tax tables differ. It depends on the Minister of Finance and what they decide, the finance department of the government decide. So you don't have to know 
the rebates, a rebate will be given to you in the tax table. And remember, a rebate is like a discount. We get three types of rebates. We get primary rebates, secondary, and, oh, I made, sorry, uh, Grade 12s, it's a primary, a secondary, and that must be a tertiary, a tertiary rebate. I will correct this so that uh, the PowerPoint is correct when they post it on the website. Sorry about that. That must say tertiary. So rebates is age dependent. And when we come to the tax tables in a while, I will show you, um, I will show you how they are um, age dependent. Then we come to UIF, Unemployment Insurance Fund. Employers have to contribute 1% of their gross salary to the UIF if you belong to the UIF. And UIF is not a tax deduction. UIF is a salary deduction. So if you um, remember the salary slip that we had right on the first slide um, when we started this afternoon, there was a UIF um, deduction on the salary slip. So UIF is not a tax deduction. Um, that is why it's important that we understand the theory um, behind the tax calculations. All right, then we come to tax deductible deductions. So these are specific deductions that are subtracted from the gross income before tax is calculated. So what can you deduct. So individual deductions. So pension fund contributions up to 7.5% can be deducted from your gross income. Retirement annuity fund contributions, the SARS or the government will provide you with a table to tell you what you can deduct. Provident fund contributions, also, you will, the SARS will tell you the amount that you can deduct. Legal costs under qualifying circumstances, wear and tear in respect of certain assets, and donations to approved bodies. So you can't just donate money. So SARS will have a table, and then they will tell you if this is an approved body or not. Then we come to a tax threshold. Now, what is this? It is the amount of income below which you do not pay any income tax, so you don't, don't have to file a tax return to SARS. So any income less than what SARS provide in the tax tables then will not be taxed. And we will come to this in a moment when we start, we're going to start to work out examples. Then medical tax credits, the MTCs. So a medical tax credit is a rebate and not a, de a deduction. A medical tax credit is the same for all salaries and all age groups. It's a fixed monthly amount which increases according to the number of dependents. The, firm, the first amount in the table is always for the taxpayer who paid the medical scheme contribution. So if we go back to the uh, salary slip in the beginning again, there was this person, that person belonged to a medical aid, and there was a medical aid contribution on his salary slip. So that person who pays the medical scheme contribution, he is the taxpayer. Then the first dependent can be a spouse, or it can be a child, or any person the taxpayer is paying a medical aid contribution for. Um, and we will talk about this again when we are going to start working out the example. So remember, the first amount in the, tax, uh, the table is always for the taxpayer who makes the contribution to the medical uh, scheme. And then the first dependent can be the spouse if he's married, or it can be a child. So calculating income tax. So we annually, it's very important to remember that the tax tables use 
they always talk about annual income. So whatever we work with in the tax tables, and they are not already annual income, we need to multiply by 12 to get it to annual income. Annual means per year. So then we come to steps to calculate income tax. I just want to go there. OK, so the first step, calculate the annual gross salary or income if, if necessary. Sorry, there we go. So that's your first step. It's important to remember that the tax tables provided to you from SARS only work with annual amounts. And sometimes they give the monthly, and then you must multiply by 12. And sometimes they already give us the annual gross salary. It's very important that we just read the question. Then subtracts tax deductible deductions. So C specific deductions which are allowed to be subtracted from the gross income before tax is calculated. So subtract the pension fund if necessary. Once you have deducted what the, the allowed uh, amounts that you are allowed to deduct, then you have what we call taxable income. So grade 12s, you must remember, so you have your, your gross um, annual salary. And then we want to be able to give the person, or SARS would like to give the person some relief. So remember, the bigger the amount is that you're going to take to the tax table, the more tax you're going to pay. So the aim is that you want to get your taxable income as small as possible and therefore we want to deduct whatever we are allowed to deduct to make this taxable income as small as possible because the bigger that amount the more tax you're going to pay all right so we take our gross annual income or salary we multiply that by 12 the salary we deduct what we are allowed to and then we have taxable income. So then we go to step number three, we check the threshold. So in the tables, they're going to show you the amounts for the thresholds. And then if you are lower than that amount, you stop. If you are higher than that amount, you proceed because then you must pay tax. Then you identify the tax bracket and you are going to do the calculations. So take the taxable income amount and look up the sliding scale rate on the tax tables as provided by SARS every year. Do the calculations to determine the income tax payable. You will need to choose the correct bracket that the person fall in and then use the information in your calculations. Then you subtract the correct rebate. So depending on the age, it's important to check. We get primary, secondary, and tertiary, and every person qualifies for a primary rebate, and then you follow the tables. After you've subtracted the rebate, you subtract the medical tax credits. So you ma make sure that it is annual medical tax credits. Then, if asked to calculate the monthly income tax, the step can be optional because it depends on the question. But if they ask you to calculate the monthly income tax, your final answer will then be divided by 12. So I want to quickly stop here for a moment. So remember again the salary slip. On the salary slip, there was a pay as you earn amount. Now this amount here. If they ask you to calculate the monthly income tax that the sorry tax that the person is going to pay, then you are going to divide the final amount by 12. This amount that you have here in this step number seven is the amount that's going to appear on an individual's salary slip. This is the amount that will will be deducted from his salary slip every month. All right, 
let's move along then. So I have a cheat sheet, which I then give my grade 12s, and I always say, visualize this so that you can check to see if you have followed the correct steps. So let's start with determine the gross income. Salary, step number one. What is step number two? Subtract tax deductible expenses, what you are allowed. Remember, we want this amount here as small as possible. Then you have the taxable income. Once you have determined the taxable income, you check the threshold. Then you decide, is it less than the thres th uh, threshold? You stop. If it's more, you continue. Then we determine the tax. So taxable income will then go to the tax tables provided. So then we determine the tax. Then I determine and deduct the rebates, all right? And then I also determine and deduct the medical tax credit. And then I determine my net pay if they ask me to work out. This, this last step is the question will guide you. All right, then let's see how to use the tax rate tables. So before you get started, make sure you have the annual taxable income. In other words, we need to work that out. And then the age of the individual, because why must we have the age of the individual? Because remember, there's rebates that we are allowed to deduct and they are age dependent. Then secondly, you use the annu annual taxable income to determine the correct bracket the bracket one to seven, and the threshold. I want to quickly show you this. So there's the threshold. This is what you will get. Persons under 65. So if you earn a salary less than, or an annual salary less than 73,650, then, or equal to, then you will not pay tax. Then you will not proceed. If you are between the ages of 65 and 74 and you earn an annual salary of 114800 or equal to, you don't pay, and 75 years and older, 128500 So if you earn less or equal to the amount per year, you will not pay tax. So this is where you check the threshold. Then, rates of tax for individuals. Okay, so on your left-hand side, grade 12s, we have the brackets. This part, this part here, where I'm moving it up and down, the pointer up and down, that is the brackets. That is where you're going to see where we need to find the tax bracket where the individual will fall in. Once you have your bracket, you will go horizontally to the right-hand side of this table and you will see, you find the bracket and then you see the calculations that must be done. So that is a fixed amount. This is the percentage and that part is the bottom of the bracket. That is the bottom of the tax bracket. Then User information in the rates of tax column to perform the calculation. This is the rate of tax column, and this is how we're going to formulate and calculate the tax. This side is only to find the correct bracket, and this side is my calculations. Then I, after I've done that, I subtract applicable tax rebates. Oh, sorry. Uh, applicable tax rebates. I just want to go there and enlarge that a bit. All right. So remember I said they are age dependent. So the primary rebate of 14,958 rand is for everyone who pays tax. Then if a secondary rebate is for people that 65 years and older. But remember that 65 year and older person 
is entitled to primary and secondary. And then if you are 75 years and older, you are entitled to the primary, the secondary, and the tertiary. So yes, if you are 75 years and older, you can get the relief for three rebates. And then divide the answer by 12 if they ask for monthly tax. Okay, so we are then going to start with our first example. So our first example is John is 25 years old with a gross monthly income of 5,500 Rand and no deductible expenses. Calculate tax payable by John using the following income tax tables. Now, grade 12s, if they don't mention anything about pension fund, if they say they don't mention anything about medical aid contributions, we never assume. We just let the question guide us. All right. So John's got a gross monthly income of 5,500 and no deductible expenses. Okay, so there's our tax tables. So I just want to show you with this example how everything is connected. So there's the 18%. There's 18%. So what we need to do, oh, sorry, 18%, 73,650 brings us to 13,257. And that links to the rebate for people below age 65. So in the tax table, everything is actually connected. So step one will then be to t uh, get the annual salary because they only gave us the monthly salary. So we take the 5,500 Rand and we multiply it by 12 and we get 66,000 Rand per annum now, in other words, for the year. Deduct pension fund, not necessary because no pension fund contribution. So then this is the taxable income. Now, remember, check the threshold. So the threshold for people below 65, remember John was 25 years old. So the threshold, uh, sorry, I just want to go to the next one. There's the threshold. So the threshold below 65, 73,650, all right? So what is John paying? John's taxable income is only 66,000 Rand. So the threshold for people below 65 is 73,650 according to the tables that we received from SARS. So since 66,000 Rand is less than 73,650, John does not have to pay tax and therefore we will stop, we will not proceed with this question because there's no need for John to um, hand in a um, tax to pay to SARS. Why not? Because he earns below the tax threshold. All right, then we will move along to the second example. So the second example Peter is a salesperson. He is 37 years old and earns a monthly gross salary of 32,750 Rand. Calculate his monthly income tax. Peter does not belong to a medical or a pension fund. So then the tax tables will be provided to you. So there's, remember, there's the tax tables and there's a rebate table as well. So how will we do the calculations for Peter? Step one will be to get the annual salary. Why the annual salary? Number one, the tax tables that's been provided to us by SARS, they only work with annual 
amounts. And in the question that was given, it said he earns a monthly gross salary of 32,750 Rand. So step number one, get the annual salary. So we take the 32,750 Rand and we multiply it by 12. So 393,000 Rand will be his salary for the year. Step number two, is not necessary because in the question they said Peter does not belong to a medical aid or a pension fund. So no pension fund contributions. So therefore the meaning is that amount is also his taxable income. So check the threshold. So no threshold was given uh, to check because it was not given, and uh, the threshold, um, like in the previous question, this is way above any threshold, but there was no threshold given, so then you don't check the threshold. Step number four, identify the tax bracket. All right, so now we go back to the tables that's been provided to us, and then we need to find the tax bracket where Peter is going to fall in. So remember, Peter's annual salary is 393,000. So this side of the tax tables for individuals, the rate of tax, there's, there's one bracket, first bracket, second bracket, he doesn't fall in the first bracket, or the second bracket. Now let's have a look at the third bracket. So he earned 393,000 Rand. So he falls in this range here. Peter falls in tax bracket number three. Okay, so now on the left hand side, we determine his bracket. Now we move along to the right hand side. And then we go and have a look at what they say we need to do. So it is 67,144 Rand plus 31% of taxable income above 321,600. All right, so now we need to go and work it out. So we identified the tax bracket, we've done that, bracket number three, and now we are going to do the calculations of the tax bracket. So 67144 plus 31% and that remember that is his taxable income and then we minus the lowest part of the bracket 321600. That that part in the bracket gives us 71000 oh so sorry 7140 rand. So then we multiply 31% get 31% of that. And then we add that. And then this is 89,278 Rand. This is the tax that Peter needs to pay. Now the next step is to deduct the rebates. Now, this is the annual tax that he needs to pay minus the primary. Why only primary? Because Peter is not en only entitled to a primary because Peter is only 37 years old. Therefore, according to the tax tables, I just want to go back to that. Primary, um, primary rebate, and Peter in the question, Peter was 37 years old, and he is entitled to the primary rebate. So let's just move along, and then we are allowed to deduct that. So then, for the tax payable, 74,320 per annum, in other words, per year. Then, the next step is medical tax credits, but we are not going to deduct any, we are not, not allowed to deduct any because Peter does not belong to a medical aid. You can only get the relief 
of a tax a medical tax credit if you belong to a medical aid. And then if they if they, uh, they ask that they did ask that you need to um, work out Peter's monthly tax, what, um, so you take the annual tax and you divide it by 12. So the 6,193 rand 33 cents is the amount that will appear on Peter's salary slip. This is the amount that will be paid over by the employer to SARS. All right, then we are going to move along to example number three. John is a 45-year-old man with a gross monthly income of 35,000 rand 500, of which 7.5% is contributed to a pension fund. He also contributes to an approved medical scheme for himself, his wife, and three children. Calculate his monthly income tax. All right, so tax tables will, of course, be provided to us. These are not things that you must know. They will be given. So we have the tax um, income, rate of tax, the rebates, and then the threshold. On the next slide, we have the medical tax credits. So boys and girls, remember annual tax, uh, the tax tables only work with annual amounts, but normally it's important to remember that medical tax is given per month. So they, these amounts here that have been provided by SARS will say medical tax credits per month. And I will come to that now. We remember, we need to work with annual amounts. So we are now going to work out John's, we are working towards working out his monthly income tax. So step number one, because it was given to us on the slide that he's got a monthly income, he earns 35,500 rand a month, we know that we need to multiply we need to take the 35,500, multiply by 12 to get his annual salary. That is step number one. Then he belongs to a medical aid. How do we know that? They told us that 7.5% was contributed to a, a pension fund. So now we are going to work out 7.5% of his salary then we get 2,662 rand 50 cents and we multiply that by 12 and we get 31,950 rand. Now, remember, he's going to get a little bit of tax relief. So we are allowed to deduct that from his salary. So you can also, what we did in method one, is I worked out 7.5% of the monthly salary. That was the amount. That is why I multiplied it by 12. In method two, I took the annual salary, multiplied by 7.5, and I get to the same answer. Remember, this one is just a salary, and this one was the monthly salary, and this one was the annual salary. Both calculates to 31,950. You use the method which you understand the best. But remember, we want to make this amount that's going to go to the tax tables as small as possible. So if you belong to a medical, uh, sorry, a pension fund, you are allowed to get some tax relief. So we can deduct 31,950. Then we get 394,050 rand. That is called taxable income. Taxable income, we are now, we have taxable income. So now we check the threshold. He is 45. So if we go back to the threshold below 65, 
the threshold is 73,650 Rand. He, you can see that the 394,050 Rand is way more than that, so now we proceed with calculating his tax. So then, identify the tax bracket. So we are, how do we identify the tax bracket? We go to the tax tables on the left hand find bracket one. No, he doesn't fall into that bracket. Bracket two, no, he doesn't. Bracket three, yes, he falls into bracket number three. And then we are going to go to the right hand side and we are going to see what they say and we are going to calculate his tax. So we are then going to say 93,135 plus 36% of the amount above 393,200. So then we do that calculation first. We see it's 850. We multiply it by the 36% and we add it to the amount of 93,135. So we add that little part and then 93441 is the tax that he needs to pay per year. Then the next step is to subtract the rebate. So he is 45 years old, so according to the tax table, we are only allowed to deduct one, which is the primary rebate. So then we deduct the primary rebate. Step number seven is to deduct the medical tax credits. So first calculate your monthly medical tax credits. So he's paying for himself, his wife, and three children. Um, so for the table, so we're going to check it. I want to go. There's the medical tax credits. So the taxpayer, which is John, you can deduct 270 Rand, that's per month. Then the first dependent, remember I told you the first dependent can be the wife, or it can be a child, or anyone that he pays for. And then the secondary or more dependents. So for himself, 270, first dependent 270, and all the other dependents, 181. These med medical tax credits, are per month. So let's go to the calculation. So there's the calculation. So 270 and thereafter for the first two. So it's 270 times two for him and his wife. And there's three children. That's why we are saying 181 times three. And remember, it is 1,083 Rand for a month. So we need to work out for the whole year. So we multiply that by 12, and it's 12,996 Rand. Then we, if we go back to the previous slide, so after we deducted the primary rebate, we were left with 80,184 Rand. Now we go and we are allowed to deduct the annual medical tax credit, which is the 12,996 Rand, and we deduct it from the tax, and we are left with 67,188 Rand. And then, of course, the question asks that we work out his monthly income tax. So therefore, we will go to step eight, and we will take the 67,188 Rand, and we will divide it by 12. That leaves us with 5,599 Rand. That, again, is the amount that will appear on John's salary slip. So he will do a contribution to SARS, pay as you earn, of 5,500 Rand and 99 Rand per month. So that was then example number three. 
Then we're going to move on to example number four. Example number four says, a certified gas dealer who is 48 years old earned a taxable income of 0 0.74 million rand during 2014-15 tax year and contributed to a registered medical aid scheme for herself and for dependents. She projected that her taxable income would remain the same during the 2015-2016 tax year. Study the tax tables and the medical aid credits to answer the questions that follow. All right, so this is now a different question than the previous three. So what they are going to do here is they are, um, our first question is explain the impact of the tax rebate and the medical aid credits on tax payable. And the second question, the dealer calculated that her annual tax due to SARS South African Revenue Service would increase by only 150 from the 2014-15 tax year to the 2015-16 tax year. Verify showing all calculations whether her calculations is valid or not. So for you to be able to do this, they will provide us with two sets of tax tables. The one is for 2016 and the one is for 2015. So what we, and then they provide us the same tax rebates, 2016-15, 2016-15 for medical aid contributions, monthly medical aid contributions for both years. So if we're going to answer the first question that was said, explain the impact of tax rebate and medical aid credits on tax payable. So tax rebate reduces the tax payable and medical aids credits reduces the amount of tax to be paid. So if we go to the question that we ask, that they said that we need to verify, she said that it will only increase from one year to the other year, it will only increase by 150 Rand. Now the question says verify showing if it's correct or not. So what we need to do is we will need to work out tax for 2015-16 and to tax for 2014-15 because remember we need to compare to see if she made a valid statement or not. So then, and I also want to show you how this question differs from the rest, the previous three. In this question, they tell us that um, the dealer calculated that her annual tax to SARS, okay, the annual tax due to SARS so that, um, would increase only by 150 Rand. So. The, they already calculated, so let's go to the slide, sorry. So taxable income is 742,000 Rand. The slide said 0 0.742 million Rand. Now, of course, that is 740,000 Rand. So you had to do the conversion to rands there, all right? Um, because they told us that it was taxable income. So somewhere they already, or she, the dealer, already deducted the pension. And if they say taxable income, you leave out the first two steps because they've already made the calculations for you. Okay, so taxable income, 2015, you go and find where you will fall in the bracket and then annual income is the rate of tax minus the primary rebate minus the medical aid credits. Okay, and they also stated that she belongs to a medical aid for herself and for dependents. All right, so the first two people, according to the... Um, medical aid, taxpayer 270, first dependent 270, and additional dependents 181. 
270 for the first, and then we do the calculation. Two of them, 270, and three, 181. So, and remember, we need to multiply with 12, grade 12s. We need to multiply because it's per month. Then this is for 2015-16 tax year. And then we also need to do exactly the same for the 2014-15 tax year. They provided us with um, that tax table as well. And then the statement is not valid because if we are going to deduct 197686 and 199021 from one another, then the statement is not valid because the increase, she said that it um, will only increase by 150 rand and we see that it increased by 1,335 rand. So, grade 12, this then brings us to the um, end of today's session on um, personal income tax. Um, you received um, the little booklet um, from your school, I'm quite sure, and um, there's more examples and answers that you can work through. Um, and please do, because this is a part of the finance that I will most definitely ask you in the end of the year. So um, have a lovely afternoon, grade 12s, and go and uh, work out the rest of the examples as well.